Hi everyone, let's have a look at an example finding the inverse Laplace transform using completion of the square. So here's our example. So you remember that finding the inverse Laplace transform means that we are moving from our frequency domain into our time domain, which means that we are moving from where our function has only S's in as variables, and we are moving into the time domain, which means you have P as your variable. And the way we're going to do that is we use the table of Laplace transforms. So we are moving now from our left, from our right hand side to our left hand side. Yeah. And the way we do that is we have to choose and make our function into the same form as one of the items on the table. And we need a strategy to do that. So if we look at the example that we've got right we always start with our denominator okay so you look and see whether or not you have anything on your table that has the same form as that denominator and you'll find that you don't because this is a trinomial and pretty much all of the items on the table always have two terms yeah then the next question you ask yourself can you factorize this can you prime factorize it? Because if you can, it means you can use partial fractions in order to simplify the function or to change the form of the function. But here you can't do that. So we're going to have to use completion of the square. And using completion of the square, we use the following formula. So if you have your trinomial, you can simplify it like this, right? And if we apply this formula to what we've got, you'll see we have 3s plus 2 over, and let's see, we have s in the bracket plus b in this case is going to be minus 8, minus 8 over 2 squared plus 25, and then it's going to be minus and it's minus 8 over 2 squared. So we've got 3s plus 2 over s, that's going to be minus 4 plus 25, and this is going to be minus 4 squared, so it's minus 16. And we'll have 3s plus 2 over s minus 4 squared. And this is going to be plus 9. Okay, so if we look at the denominator that we've got, we now have that denominator in the same form as these four items. Right, so you see in your denominator you've got two terms for all of them, and both of these terms can be written as squares. So you see the first term is s minus 4 all squared, and that can just be rewritten as 3 squared. Right, so it's the same as these four here. The next important thing you have to note though is the sign in between those two terms in the denominator. That's very important. So if you have minus signs, it means you are looking at 11 or 12. If you've got plus signs, it means you're looking at 9 or 10. And what do we have? We have a plus sign, right? So that narrows down what you are looking at to number 9 or number 10. Okay. Then, once you have your denominator in the same form, you look at your numerator. So what have we got here? Our numerator has two terms with an S in the first term, which takes us to number 10, right? Because you've got two terms and you have an S in your first term. But the value in front of your S is 1, right? Now you remember that your form has to be exactly the same as on your table, which means you can't have any number in front of you. You can't have any coefficient except 
1. And what you've got here is 3. So we can't have the 3. So we have to factorize that out. Okay. So I'm going to take 3 out here. And I'm going to say S plus. And what is this going to change into? It's going to change into 2 over 3. Right? Because remember, when you're factorizing, you're only changing the forms of your function. You can't change the value of it. Okay. Right. So now we have it in the same form as number 10. But remember I said it has to be in exactly the same form. So let's have a look at what number 10's form is. So we do that so we can compare what we've got. Okay. So we have our denominator. Right? We have our denominator. That's fine. Okay. If I look at the form on the table, your numerator has to be the same as what is inside of this bracket here, right? So you have to have S minus B in this bracket, which must have S minus B in your numerator. So if that's the case, this bracket has to be the same as in the numerator, which means I need to have S minus 4 in my numerator, but I don't have that. I've got S plus 2 over 3, which is something that's different. Okay, which means that you can't find the inverse Laplace transform at this stage because they're not the same form. So what do we do? We manipulate the form. So I'm going to say 3, I'm going to put an S here, and I'm going to put 2 over 3 here. Alright, so S minus 4 squared and I'm just going to write this as 3 squared because then it looks the same as on the table. So what do I need? I need to have s minus 4. So I need to have minus 4 here. So if I look at this piece here, not looking at 2 over 3, if I look at that, that is in exactly the same form as number 10. But if I do this, I change the value of this function, right? Not just the form. So I need to do something that's not going to disrupt that. So how do I do that? Because I minus, I can just say I add it up, right? Because this is going to add up to zero. So it doesn't change the value of your function at all. That means that this piece here, right? If I do this piece here, that is going to be number 10. And then this, I can break off, so to say. Right? So I can split up this fraction. So I can split him so that he looks like this. I put the S minus 4 this side. And I put all the numbers on the other side. Right? So then the first term in this inverse looks exactly the same as number 10 on your table, right? Because you have a denominator that looks the same and your numerator matches the first term in your denominator. So that one is number 10. Fine, you sorted. But if you look at the second term, that one is not the same form as number 10, right? Because the numerator here is going to simplify to some number, which means you are looking at the one for number 9. So there's a number in the numerator. However, the number has to match in this, with the second term in the denominator. 
right? And that it doesn't, because you first have to add this up, and it has to be the same as 3, which it doesn't, right? So, because you have your first term, which is in the form, but your second term is not, you can't find the inverse at this stage. You can't do it in pieces. You have to do the entire function in one go. So we first have to work at this term here before we can find our inverse. Right? So let's see. What do we have? So let me see. This is going to be S minus 4. Right, and 4 plus 2 over 3 is the same as 14 over 3. second term right and we look at the form of it on our table I said our numerator has to match with the second term in the denominator yeah which means that we need to have a 3 in the numerator and that you can introduce because it's just a number so we can say times 3 but you can't leave it at that you have to Put it in the denominator here because then they simplify right so you haven't changed the value of the function only the form okay which means your first term is now in the form as number 10 on your table and the second term is in the form of number 9 on your table so now you're in a position to find your inverse Laplace transform right Oh, and I think I forgot to mention that this notation here is the same as writing f of s, right? Which means that the line we've got at the bottom, this line here, is f of s, right? And we are now going to take it to f of t. Okay? So... The first term, we keep the 3. The first term is going to be number 10. And number 10 says the f of t, just move this a bit. So you can see we need to have e. Our power is going to be what is in the numerator, the second term in your numerator, and the second term in this bracket, which in this case is going to be 4. Alright, so it's going to be 4t, right, and it's going to be, because a is the 3, so it's going to be 3t, right, plus 14 over 9. And the second term you're going to have, that is number 9. So let me just get that for you. Right. And you see you've got, it's going to be E. Your power is going to be B, and B is in that bracket, which in this case is 4. 4T. Four and it's going to be sine and A is going to be the 3 right so let me just write that neatly for you okay so we have 
f of t equals 3e for t cos 3t plus 14 over 3e for t sine 3t, right? And that is now in your time domain, right? Now, something that is very important for you to remember is that you cannot, when you write, when you go from f of s to f of t, remember you must, you can't leave this out, right? So if you write that out and then just say equals to this, you can't do that because these functions are not equal to one another. They're just different forms of something, right? They're in different domains. So you have to put the f of t down here. Okay, so what have we done? Just to summarize, we've taken a Laplace transform and found its inverse, right? So we've moved from the S domain or the frequency domain where S is the variable. We have changed the form of the function into what is something that is on your table and then found your F of T value. You found your F of T, which is this over here. I hope that was helpful. Please come back and check out another example. Bye.